Hello everyone again. Um, nice to be back. Um, wanted to carry on uh, some of these tips videos about little things that I've discovered that have helped me when I'm coming over from Cubase and certain little bits and pieces that, that really make a difference. And there's one little tip I'm going to give you has really helped me out coming from a hardware-based world, especially when you're recording stuff using compressors on the way in, etc., that can really help you out. If, like me, in my little, I'm at home, my little mixing setup, all I've got is a Focusrite Sapphire up here that, you know, it's got a few ins and outs, but nothing that I could really start using major. I could plug a nice preamp in, I guess, but, but you know. But I'm going to show you a little trick with that. So... I want to try and keep this a bit short so I won't ramble on. So I've got in front of me a project here. This is the first thing I'm going to talk about is project organisation. After we talked about in the last video the new version, a way of um, installing Reaper to keep everything nice and tidy. I want to talk to you about a, a way I like to do this with the folders because um, it's how Cubase does it automatically. But in, in Reaper... The file system when you create a project isn't the same. This confused me for quite a while. Now I'm going to show you what I mean first. Let me just um, get this up. So this is the project that's in front of me now. Um, this is how it looks in my on my hard disk. Okay. So all my media files are in the same folder as my my Reaper project file and all my backup files, okay? Now, for me, this is not organization. This is quite confusing. So I'm going to show you the second one here. And this is how I like it to look. This is how I saved it on my, on my main hard drive, on the hard drive when I'm actually working on this mix. So I've got all my audio files in their own folder. So then I've just got my Reaper project file at the top and I've got my backup files in, in that folder there. So my, my media files are all kept to a separate folder on their own. Very simple how you do this. If you go into File, Project Settings, or you, alternatively you can do Alt Return, open up the Project Settings, it should open up here. Now this is how it looks default with Reaper. It doesn't have that there. Okay, There's nothing in here. So all I've done with mine is I say audio, and basically if I now save that as my default project setting, I've told Reaper that every time to I create a project file, I want to create an audio file which is going to store all my media files, etc. in within that, but it will still be in the project folder, but it will be in a separate audio folder as you saw. Save as default, job done, okay? Really simple little trick that I, I love because it just helps me with my organisation. I'm going to flip over to another project. So excuse, I've got two BSAF 2000s in front of me and they make a bit of a racket when they click over. So excuse the noise, but here we go. Just checking you can hear me. Yep. So I've got some drums in front of me. I'm actually going to play a little bit of bass for you just to, to, to demonstrate something as I am actually a bass player. Um, I want to talk about input effects. Now, for those of you that know Reaper, I know I'm teaching people to suck eggs again. But for me, I, I didn't realize this could be done. And I didn't really understand it, even once I realized that I kind of didn't twig what was going on. And effectively, you can put whatever effects you want on the input of your signal and it gets recorded onto your hard drive with the effect there. When you listen back, you, you're not listening to the effect because that's on the input side of things. Now, let me show you. I've got this bass track here, which I'm going to use to play bass. Now, when the record isn't enabled, you see it's just the normal I.O. stuff that's there. There's nothing else going on there, okay? As soon as I click on the record, You'll notice this input effects lights up. Now, it lights up orange because I've actually got something on there. But as you can see on these other tracks, it's just grey. There's nothing there. Okay. What I can do is if we open this up, this is one of my little favourite new buys. I bought this this week and I'm a happy little camper. It is 
fucking fantastic. Okay, I'm sorry to swear, but it is brilliant. I love my man over there at um, SK Note. He's just amazing. So this is my newest uh, purchase that I've bought. And I'm just going to digress very, very quickly. I want to just show you something. If you are a Focusrite uh, audio interface user, you, at the moment... I mean, there's so many free plugins come with this that I know I've been constantly getting more and more. All I have installed, I haven't got the Midnight Suite installed. For those of you that have Focusrite interfaces will know what I'm talking about. Um, I have got the Red Compressor and EQ installed, which came free again with this, with the interface. And the latest one is the Isotope uh, DD Delay. $50 plugin. It's absolutely free if you've got a Focusrite I know from Sapphire and upwards, uh, I'm not too sure with the, what the red ones were, the, the USB ones below that, but even the red plugins you can get with them. So, you know, absolutely amazing. Anyway, uh, quick digression. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch this off. Okay, I've got a little bit of a drum beat. I'll just grab the bass. I've just got a cheapy jazz copy here. Nothing fancy. Um... So what we'll do, I've got no compression going on at the moment, so let's record uh, a little eight bar section, then we'll put the compressor in, record again, and I'll show you what this means. I'll pull that out of the way, we'll hit record. I'm going to stop it there and what I'm going to do as you can see the waveform you can see it yourself is quite dynamic if I just pull up the, the limit the, the compressor I've already set this up to give me you know more than I would normally do it but enough so that you can see what's going on so if we pull it out of the way well actually I'll leave it up there and we'll hit record uh, can't really make it any smaller if we leave it there so as you can see it compressing and we'll hit record from here. Now we can see straight away the difference in the waveforms alone. If I open that up, you can see that this is really being compressed on the second one. And that now, when I play it back, the, comp the compression. <laughs> is not being triggered. Uh, let me open it up, I'll just show you. The compression is just not being triggered. There's nothing going on. Okay, so it's just purely uh, on, on the input side of things, okay? And then you can just forget about it. You can get rid of it or just leave it. It doesn't matter because you're not going to hear it on playback. So just an amazing little uh, tip for those of you recording and using interfaces, etc., and you haven't got any hardware gear, you can actually do it with um, input effects. So you can do all kind of, you know, use what you want, EQs, preamp, plugins, etc., 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 you know how this goes. So please, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. I really appreciate it. I've got quite a few new comments and really appreciate and I I'm getting all confused now. I appreciate the lovely comments and I appreciate the new subscribers. So keep them coming, tell your friends, tell your mother, tell your granny, don't matter. Um and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks people. Bye now.